In this lesson for Bobcat Cam, we're going to take a look at how to create a fourth axis horizontal tombstone configuration type machine from scratch inside the multi-axis portion of the software. Now as you can see here, I have a simulation opened up. And it's just showing the tool and what looks like a tombstone with stock. I have my machine configured, but I don't have any geometry for the actual components of the machine. The reason you're seeing what looks like a tombstone is I made my stock for the job one big piece like that. So just to give you an idea of the type of machine we're going to create, and this is one where the tombstone would be sitting on the X on a horizontal machine. You can see it's going back and forth. And then the rotation is done on the platter that's sitting on the X afterwards. So you can see if I just bring this up here a little bit. Let it finish up that first stop there. And you can see it's doing the pockets and turning around as it goes. So this is the type of machine that we're going to create to show you how to configure something a little different in the software. So let's go ahead and stop this. Let's go to a new window. All right, so in our new window, we're going to right-click Milling Tools. We're going to go to Default for our System Settings and Current Settings and Machine Parameters. In here, you have Add, Delete, and Modify. We're going to add a new machine. We're going to call this Fourth Axis Bobcad Horizontal Tombstone. Mill. Give it a nice long name. Make sure I did all that right. Yep. So we'll make this a four axis machine. Actually, let's do user defined. If we do four axis and we choose one of the machine types, it lays out the configuration for us. And what it's going to do is a regular vertical machine with an indexer on it. We don't want that. We don't want any of these configurations that it's calling out. So we're going to do user defined and tell it what we want. So when I press OK, it says fourth axis horizontal mill. So when I go to machine definition, notice the machine configuration here is blank. We get to start with a blank slate and build the machine how it needs to be for us. So if you even, like if you've got a home built machine, this is going to be the way you want to go around if it doesn't match any of the standard configurations. So we need to think about our machine. So we have the base. Now the, the head moves up and down because it's horizontal and then the Z comes out off of that. Now the head that goes up and down on a horizontal is the Y and the Z comes in and out off the Y. So our Y is attached to our base and our Z is attached to our Y. Is the X attached to Y? No, that one's attached to the base as well. And it moves back and forth left to right if you're standing in front of it. Now the tombstone, which is the index, sits on top of the X. So if the X moves, the tombstone moves. So you have our base, our Y is attached to our base and our Z is attached to our Y. And then we have our base with our X attached to it and our B attached to our X. So we're going to go ahead and configure that inside of here now. So we're going to right click on the main base up here and we're going to add a translation axis. And you can see I have X, Y, Z or I can even define my own. So let's start with the Y. And you can see it puts it in the tree. What's attached to the Y? If we right click on it, the Z. If we go back to the base, right click on it, the X is attached to the base. You see how it comes still down off the base and into the X. And then from here, we're going to add a rotation axis and we're going to rotate around the B. So here we have our different axes of rotation. What we're going to do next is simply click on the Y so we can start setting our travels and everything. So if I click on the Y, you can see it brings up the machine data. Now you have your X, Y, and Z. Y being you can see 1 is, means it's on, 0 means it's off. Now you can do a 1 or a minus 1 in here depending on what's moving. Since the actual tool is what's moving on the y-axis, not the table itself, we want that to be positive. If the table was moving and this tool was stationary, we want it to be a minus one so it knows the difference in those. All right, so we're going to move our y and down at the bottom we need to set our travels. Now for my example, we're going to do minus 20 inches in the y with a plus of 40 inches so it can go up higher than it can go down. And the initial value is a value that needs to be between those. Since that's a negative and a positive, 0 will be fine. If they were both positives, like 5 and 40, we'd pick something like 10 or 20 or somewhere in the middle. It could even be one end or the other. So when we go down to Z, now Z is moving, so it's going to be a positive number. We're going to come in here. We're going to make our travels a little different, though. We're going to go minus 0. And we're going to do a positive 18-inch travel, let's say. Initial value is 0. It's between 0 and 18. It's one end of it. 
click on X. Now our X is the tables moving. So this is going to be oops, minus 1. Now our travels in X are going to be as well. We're going to do minus 40 and plus 40. And then 0 will be in between them. For the B, we're going to leave 1 because we're on the Y. Because it's actually parallel to the Y axis when you think about it. If you were looking straight up the, out of the center of the rotation, you'd be going straight up, which is your Y's column. So you want to rotate around the Y. That's why we chose the B rotation axis. The way it works is A usually rotates around the X, B rotates around the Y, and C rotates around the Z. Now, those are not the letters that will come out in the code. That's handled by post-processor. So if that was an A value still, the post-processor will, will handle that. This is just creating the machine configuration inside of here. Now, this one does have a minimum and maximum rotation amount. So we're going to do minus 9999.39s. And then we'll do 1234.123. And set the minimum and maximum. So once it hits that value, if it needs to go more, more the tool will lift. The machine will re rewind and then continue on. So now that we have all that set, that machine should be pretty much built, ready to go, except for a couple things. We've got to add in our work holder and our spindle. So on the Z, are we going to have the work holder or the spindle? Obviously, we're going to have the spindle. So we're going to go down and add a transform. Transform is a group. I can add each element independently if I want, or we can add a transform. Actually, let's do the set. Sorry, the set is the group. The transform is the pieces individually. So we'll use a dynamic element, and we'll do a tool set. You can see this adds in the tool, the flute, the shaft, the arbor, and everything right on the z-axis. Then our, our workpiece will actually sit on the B, and we're going to add another dynamic element of the workpiece set. So it adds in the workpiece, the tool path, the stock, the fixture, and all that stuff in here as well. So now our machine is completely built, and if we OK this, we can actually try it now. I have that file we can open up. Actually, let's just go over to it. It's already open. Let's close our simulation. Milling tools will go to part, so we can choose the one for this file in current settings. And we're going to look for our fourth axis bobcat horizontal. I guess I made the name a little long where you can't even see it all. Press OK. And OK here. And we'll go to modules and mill simulation. Let's see if this runs through OK. Takes just a second to open. Okay, looks like everything came in so good so far. Now you can see it's laying down. That's because that's the Y, remember? So we'll just rotate it up. Fit my screen. So there's my Y. There's my X. There's my Z. And if I come over here and hit play, it should start cutting the part out, which it does. Should do our rotates. Yep, and it's rotating around the correct axis. So that was a su successful build of the machine. Now, don't forget, you don't need to stop there. You'll still need to go in and set up your posting page with that machine, which we'll go in and show you where that's at in just a second as well, as well as your multi-axis posting with that machine. And that and the post processor all work together. So good, we have a correct machine here. You can see our travels are represented down here. So we'll go ahead and close this down. So if I go back over to this one here, right-click milling tools, default current settings, now, the machine parameters, whichever one you have shown here, will be your default machine that comes up every time. All right, so we've got our machine definition set. Let's go down to posting. We need to pick a post processor for this machine. Let's say we're going to use Haas 4X OEM mill. So now every time that machine's chosen, that's the post that gets called up. And again, maybe for this one, we need to use a TXT file extension. Default program number. And then we'll come down to the multi-axis posting page. Set your settings appropriately in here. And just press OK. Now that machine is set. So you can see this one currently has a different machine set to it. So if we go to part for this drawing, current settings, you can see it has the five-axis bobcat mill. Let's switch over to that four-axis horizontal. And you can see it switches my post processor and everything for me. So getting your machine set up is a very important thing you want to do in the software. You want to have your machine set up, it calling the correct post processor, the correct multi-axis posting information set. All that works with the settings in the post. So once you have your toolpath generated, it knows how to simulate the movements so you can see them properly and which axis is to move, how much, and which way.
All right, so this concludes this lesson.